Okay, here's the thing. If you have a server, you have to manage the server itself, that infrastructure, right? As well as the business logic that is within that, your application code. Makes sense. But if you have a serverless function like a Lambda, you only have to manage that business logic itself. Everything else is pretty much handled for you. But you can take it even further. You can say, what if I want to have a direct integration between services? That way I'm just passing data through and transforming the data. I'm not actually doing anything more besides that. Let me show you what I mean. We have a practical example over here where a user is in an XJS application and they are using Stripe to therefore make a payout. And then on a webhook on the back end side of things, you're going to have a Lambda function get triggered. Now, everything inside of this Lambda function is your responsibility. If you have to do like a checkout succeeded, if you have to do like a payment failed, all of that stuff is your responsibility. You have to manage that if else code inside of your Lambda function. But recently we switched up the game, Stripe and EventBridge. Stripe is an AWS partner. And they were like, hey, how about we just talk to each other? So that way, anytime one of those events happen, now you can pass that message over to EventBridge and you can do whatever you want. Maybe you want to add in a step function workflow. Maybe you want to notify the front end, in which case you have AppSync in the mix and you can go ahead and pass that message over to your front end to get a real time subscription. Let me show you how to set up this portion right here because it's pretty crazy once you get the hang of things. So over in the Stripe dashboard, I'm going to bump this up for you just a little bit. We want to, I'm in my test account. We want to go over here and create a new sandbox. Apparently this is like the new way of creating a, a, a test environment. I'm going to call this, you know, video event bridge and create the sandbox. Now what's really cool is that once I'm over here, I can go over to developers and then event destinations. And I want to turn on my workbench. This is going to be enabled and I'm going to be using Node.js, even though I'm not going to actually write any code inside of this. So we have this over here set up perfectly fine. And what I want to do is head over to event destinations. Now we all know that you can set up a webhook with Stripe. At least a lot of us know that. But in my case, I want to say that this is going to be an event going straight to my AWS account. Now using it, we can do the latest version here. That's cool. And then when it comes to the events, I'm going to say checkout dot, and then we have completed just like so. So far, so good. And then you have the distinction. You have a webhook endpoint or event bridge. I'm going to go in and click OK over here, put in my AWS account. There we go. And then for the region itself down in US East one, we'll just keep everything fine. I'm just going to say EB test, and then I can go in and create my destination. Now here's where things get really cool. Uh, you see that I have this source right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that event source ARN. Now I want to associate this with a partner event source. So we're going to click over here, which is then going to need me to associate it with an event bus. So far, so good. I'm staying inside of my organization and it's not going to be in a different AWS account. So I'll click on associate. And then when I click on event buses, I have this brand new custom event bus that was created for me. Now, what I can do from here is create a rule, right? This rule on this custom event bus is going to do nothing more than listen for that checkout success. So I'm going to say the rule name is going to be on, I will call it checkout success. I can bump this up for you. Just like so, it's going to be for this event bus and then we want to give it the event pattern. Now we don't need a sample, but if you want to come down here and get one, we can say that we can have an event bridge partner. It's going to be for Stripe. And then the actual event type is going to be for checkout and then completed success right here. Now I do want to edit this because again, I copied that event source. So I don't want the prefix. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this right here. And then I'm going to add in that entire part for my clipboard. So just what I had right here. Now this is looking great, but what do I want to do with this event? It's, this is my if statement right here. When this event happens is checkout success. What do I want to do? In my case, I can do step functions. I can do app sync, or I can just say, I'm going to log this out because I'm testing right now. And we're just going to call this like our video tests, right? I'm going to click on next, just like that. Click on next through here, and then just create the rule. Now, once this is all created, I can head back over to Stripe. And actually, let me go ahead and bring up this target and we can go to that CloudWatch log. Like nothing's, nothing's in here yet. Cool. So if I come over to Stripe, and then I come down here, maybe give this a refresh. We can see that the event source status is active. Great. And now I just want to go ahead and trigger it. Now, what I love about the Stripe CLI is that I can say Stripe trigger and then give it the part that I wanted to trigger right here. So I'm going to click enter. Bring this up just a little bit so we can all see it. 
and it has all the details right here. My trigger was successfully sent. In fact, if I go over to event deliveries and bring this down a little bit, and I should be able to give this a quick little refresh. There we go. We can see that it was delivered, but let's verify that by going over to CloudWatch. So over in CloudWatch, if I give this a refresh, we have one event here. And sure enough, if I peel this apart, it has the entire event as if somebody were to go ahead and check out in my store. This is all managed for me. I didn't have to write any business logic to say when a checkout session is completed, go ahead and do this. It's pretty amazing.